All right, so this is a read aloud for fourth grade. Um, this is in the text set of um, I think the friendship. Yeah, friendship. Um, we're going to be reading Mangu's Mischief and Tales of Friendship Stories from India, Sharat Sounder. Okay, so you should have out your assignment so you can answer your questions. Um, why do you? What do you know about folk tales? The book we're going to start today is a collection of stories inspired by folk tales from India. The stories are set in an imaginary kingdom in India, and they still and tell the adventures of two ten-year-old boys. Prince Vira and his best friend Suku. As they settle a range of problems, the book is Man the book is Mangu's Mischief and Tales of Friendship by Shirat Shitra Sundar. Prince's, Prince Vera's first case. Long ago in a far, far away land, King Bimi ruled a small kingdom surrounded by the magnificent hills of Hintuf. King Bimi was a kind and just ruler. Each day he held courts at the palace. Each rich or poor, tall or short, man or woman, anyone could walk in with a problem. The king would always find a way to solve it. The king lived with his wife and son in a red stone palace. Prince Vera was ten years old, but he didn't go to school. The school came to him. His teachers lived in the palace and taught him mathematics, science, economics, and many languages, including Persian, Mediterranean, and Latin. The prince had to master archery, horseback riding, and swimming. Sons and ministers and students with special scholarships came to the palace to study with him. If anyone compete, compete with Prince Vera, it was Suku, the farmer's son. Suku had won a scholarship to study with the prince. He was a good match for Vera and could best him in wrestling and fencing. He rode horses as well as Vera, too. The two boys became good friends. They ate together, studied together, and played in the courtyard together. When they were let out early from classes, the boys liked to hide behind the large golden curtains and peep into the king's court. It was always filled with people who had problems. Three days after harvest, Suku came to the palace to see Ver Prince Vera. He brought fresh corn, bunches of ground nuts, and tender coconut water to drink. Do you want to go to the woods? Prince Vera asked. We can check mongoose holes for snakes and chase deer and bison. After a week of harvest, I don't want to be anywhere near plants and trees, said Suku. Can we sneak into the court and see what's going on? Let's go to the queen's chamber, said Vera. We can watch the court through the small windows. The boys scampered through the rooms, jumping jumping onto ornate chests. The thick carpets hid the sound of their hurrying feet. Whenever a card appeared, they hid behind the large carved doors. As soon as they reached the queen's chambers, Vera peeked in to see if any of his mother's maids were there. With the flowers and perfume the queen needed for her bath. Seeing no one, the boys went through the recreation room into the viewing gallery. The long, thin corridor overlooked the court. Alongside the windows, a bench was set up for the queen to sit on the on and listen. The round windows were decorated with carvings of peacocks and elephants. They glistened, reflecting the sparkle of the gemstones. This is the great place to spy, said Prince Vera. You can see and hear everything that happened. Shh. Zuki whispered. Spies don't chatter. Before Vera could reply, a horn blared. He and Suku kneeled on the cushioned benches and peeped through the windows to the beat of drums. King Bumu entered through the large doors. Two soldiers walked in front of him. A long train of Marian silk stretched from the king's tunic. What if the sentry, sentry steps on it? Prince Vera asked. I'll die laughing, said Suku. I'm sure you will die if you laugh, said Prince Vera. Want to try? Shh! Stop talking, said Suku. So a sentry is a soldier who acts as a guard. From below they heard the king say, Let the proceedings begin. Then King Bumi asked, sat down on his throne. A man stopped at the center of the court and gave his name. He asked the king to do something about the, crow the crows that dirtied his near newly built terrace. As people presented their problems, the king sometimes asked them to come back later with more details on, or to bring a witness. Sometimes he gave them work. Sometimes he gave them money. One or two even got punished for was wasting his time. Some of the problems were serious. One man was there about his six parents. A woman came to complain about her greedy landlord. Some people had silly problems, like the man who had lost his shadow. 
Another wanted to change rent to the birds that sat on his oh charge rent to the birds that sat on his roof. A woman came to complain that the roadside tree came gave more shade to her neighbor's house than her own. That's ridiculous, said Suku. When a man asked if he could live inside his neighbor's chimney, I'm sure we could solve these problems, said Vera. And we're going to let us? And who's going to let us? Suku said. That evening, the boys didn't play in the woods or swim in the river. They played court instead. Prince Vera met imaginary people and heard their cases. Suku was his counsel. A week had gone by. There was no classes on New Moon Day. With nothing to do, the boys crept into the palace to watch King Bimo hold court. But this time, the court was empty, and outside there was a long line of people waited to see the king. Where's your father? Suku said. Baron Suku raced to the king's chamber. The king is unwell, said the royal physician. Don't bother him. Vera looked at his father's pale face. His mother, the queen, sat close by tending to him. But people are waiting, Vera whispered to Suku. Maybe we should open our own court. Suku whispered back. Vera's eyes twinkled. This is the perfect opportunity. He leaned toward his father's bed. Father, I can hold court today on your behalf. He said, What? The king sputtered, trying to sit up. We have been listening to your court for many days, admitted Vera. We're, we're sure we can handle it. Are you trying to become queen, king? asked the king, smiling. No, father, but I will learn to govern, said Vera, and you can get some rest. Well, the sounds very... The, Ugh. Well, that sounds very tempting, the king said, but you can't do this on your own. Here, I present to you my wise counsel, Suku, said Vera. The king smiled at both of them. You've been planning for this for a long time, then. He said, very well, I'll give you a chance, but you can hear only simple cases and only in the courtyard, not in my court. Anything you say, father, Vera said, unable to hear, hide a smile. A court was set up quickly in the courtyard. Prince Vera's chair was placed in the middle. A chair for Suki was placed to its right. Four sentries stood nearby, guarding the courtyard as people formed a line. Some people were alone. Some had brought their friends. Some were empty-handed. Some held chickens or eggs, or an even, and one even held a bucket of barinia. Bar a sentry announced the arrival of the prince. A loud gasp rose from the people. Where is the king? Many of them cried. Let's hear the first case, said the prince, sitting down. A man who smelled of hay stepped forward and bowed to the prince. Your highness, he began. My neighbor follows my cow all around town and picks up the cow dung. I want you to forbid him to do that. Anything that anything that cow drops belongs to me. Vera thought about it for a moment and said, From today, why don't you tie a dung bag behind the cow? Then you can collect all the droppings yourself. Next case, said Suku. Dear Prince, said the next man who stepped forward, It's my neighbor. I want her to stop singing. Is she awful? asked Vera. She's the best singer in the this, in this city, Your Highness, he explained. I just sit next to the window all day and listen. I miss work on most days, Vera said, and, and Suku hundled and discussed the case. From today onward, you have to keep your windows shut until you come back from work, Vera ordered. Who is next? said Suku. Two men stepped forward. One was dressed in cotton, the other and the other in silk. The m first man stopped, stood with his arms folded. The second man leaned on his wooden cane and stroked his mustache. State your case, said Prince Vera. With due respect, dear Prince, I think the problem is too tricky for you, said the second man. If I decide the problem is too big for me, the king will surely talk to you tomorrow. So the prince, today you must place your trust in me. My name is Mitram. And the second man, I have a small sweat shop in the market. I make all the sweat, su sweets, I'm sorry, sweet shop in the market. I make all the sweets myself, and I use only pure butter and sugar. This is the prince court. Don't waste our time talking about your sweet shop, said Suku. I really like sweets, said the prince. I want to hear more. Your majesty, we make ladas, jabis, and nir, and son papdi. We make all sorts of sweets. We are famous all over the kingdom. Have you brought any sweets with you? asked the prince. Vitram turned and gestured to someone. Another man entered and handed Matram a large plate covered by a check cloth. The smell of sugar and butter wafted over the courtyard. The people closed their eyes and enjoyed the smell. Very nice, said the prince. It smells very nice. He leaned forward to take a sweet to take a sweet. Suku shook his head over so slightly. Vera sat back in his chair, frowning at Suku. Don't smell it, your majesty, said the other man. That's exactly the problem. Take the sweets to my, to my room, Vera said. A sentry took the plate from Medrum. Your majesty, said Medrum. This man, Kapi, stood several minutes 
outside my shop smelling my sweets, but he left without buying or paying. If he didn't buy, why must he pay? Said Vera, because he enjoyed the smell too much, so much. It takes a lot of butter and sugar to get that smell, Your Majesty. This, that, that smell attracts many customers into the shop. If they're all, if they all came just to smell my sweets and never buy any, I wouldn't make any money. Hmm, interesting. Said the prince, this man copy should pay five silver coins for enjoying the sweet smells in my shop. You have to be fair, Prince Vera, just like your father. Prince Vera closed his eyes. He could almost touch the wafting fragrance of the sweets. It made him slightly hungry. Copy, why do you say, what do you say for yourself? Copy was not as richly dressed as Matram. He was thin and didn't wear any jewelry. His white shirt was almost brown and his duhat was patched in many places. My dear prince, I am a poor man, Cobby began. I work very hard in the fields. Once a month, I come to town to buy groceries. I only, I only, I've only five silver coins. Walking through the market, I smelled the sweets. I stopped for five minutes, taking in the wonderful smells. But the sweets were too expensive. I couldn't afford, afford to, buy, to buy rice, vegetables, and sweets with the money I had. What did you do then, asked the prince. He didn't realize the people had to choose between vegetables and sweets. He was surprised that Copy decided to buy vegetables instead of sweets. I definitely choose the sweets, he thought. My children need food, your majesty. They go to school and they need to eat well. The sweets would last for just a day, but the rice and vegetables would last all month. So he decided not to buy the sweets. But you enjoyed the smell, the prince asked. Yes, I did. Somehow the smell itself was enough. It felt like eating the sweets. That's exactly my case, Your Majesty, piped the, in Metrom. Shh! Suki hushed the man. The prince closed his eyes. He tried not to think about the sweets, just the problem in front of him. What would his father do? Okay, I've decided, said Prince Vera. Copy, give your five silver coins to Metrom. Copy's face fell. With tears in his eyes, he handed over the money. Metrom's face lit up with joy. He counted the five silver coins at least, at least five times. The prince watched this in silence. Thank you, dear prince. You are very, you are very fair and just, said Matram. I'll take my leave now. Not so fast, my man. Now please return the five silvers to Copy. But, well, he smelled your sweets, but he didn't eat them. Yes, but, and you held the money in your hands, didn't you? Yes, but, you counted it. You imagined adding it to your money box. You enjoyed that, didn't you? Yes, but, he enjoyed the smell of sweets and enjoyed the smell of money. A fair exchange, don't you think? Matram hung his head in shame. From now on, treat your customers fairly, Prince Vera cautioned. Always make some sweets for people who cannot afford to buy expensive ones. Matram returned the money and left the court. Be bring the plate of sweets from my room, said the prince. Take these to your children, Copy. Let them eat rice, vegetables, and sweets today. Cappy left the court smiling and carrying a large basket filled with sweets. That night during dinner... Prince Vera ate all the vegetables, even his peas. Who stole the lattice? Every Ever since Matron brought the sweets into the court, not a meal was eaten without discussing them. The cooks, sundries, maids, everyone talked about the sweets and the fragrance that lingered in the hallways. Maybe the prince should have given the sweets to everyone, said a sundry. Maybe the prince should have fined Matron and made him bring more sweets, said another. Prince Vera, too, found it too difficult to forget the aroma of the sweets. He ordered that the palace be sprayed with perform fumes to wipe out the wasting smell. But it didn't help. The smell was lodged in everyone's minds. Wiping it out of the courtyard, thrones, curtains, and carpets didn't make it go away. The news reached the mis ministers, then the queen and the king. What is this gossip about the sweets? King Buham asked. It's nothing, father, just a case, said Prince Vera. Was the smell really divine, asked the queen. Yes, it was. Not even the royal cook has made sweets that smelled like this. Your father loves sweets, said the queen, especially those made of butter. The lattice, that's his favorite. Maybe we should order some sweets, said the king. If only I'd handled this case before I let you have your own court. Let me check the matram is that matram is not cheating anyone now. If he has reformed his ways, then you can buy sweets from his shop, Prince Vera said. He didn't want Matram to use his court to, his court to sell more sweets.